I want to sh- talk to you about the spacing properties within CSS, and particularly we're looking at padding and margin and border. And I want to explain what they are, what's different about them, and also show a little bit about how they might work differently in different browsers, particularly as regards width and height of elements. So what I've got is um, I've created a simple HTML page that contains an outer div, and inside there is an inner div, and then a paragraph with a bit of text in it. Um, I've also created a background image for the page, which um, has a grid on it and measures out the 100, 200, 300, 400 pixel marks so that we can see how widths and heights are uh, are affected by these properties. So I've already set my outer div to be background red. You can't see that because it's completely filled by the inner div. So if I were to set the padding, uh, before I do that, you notice I've got three different browsers open. I've got Chrome here at the top, then I've got Firefox underneath, and then I've got Internet Explorer 8. Now, in Firefox, it looks different to the other two because this this div is not all the way up at the top of the page, and that's probably just because it has a space. No? No, it's just, for some reason, it's a, a line down in the page. So, I'm going to start by showing you the effect of padding. And I'm going to put a padding of 50 pixels onto the outer div. Okay, so there, now because it's got no width set, it's just filling all the space it's got available, and that's the same in all three browsers. So you just that down to 25 pixels, so it's a bit too much red to look at. Okay, now let's say I want to set some margin as well, and here's the difference between margin and padding. Margin 25 pixels. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to apply a border of 10 pixels solid black. Okay, so they are all starting to look similar now. So what's the difference between padding and margin and border? So let's let's change these slightly. I'm going to change the padding to 50 again. Okay, so these properties are all on the outer div, which is the red one. Okay, so this red div, it's got nothing in it apart from this this yellow. Okay, but it's got padding of 50 pixels, and padding is the space inside the element that pads the element's content away from the edge of the element. Now, the edge of the element is the edge between the red and the black. Yeah. So that's padding. Padding is spacing inside of an element. Say, for example, I might want to add padding to my paragraph. So I'm going to add padding of 30 pixels to my paragraph. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Internet Explorer. So now there's 25 pixels at the top, left, bottom, and right of my paragraph as well. And IE has done something peculiar. So that's padding margin. Margin is the space outside of an element and outside of its border. So this red div with the black border has got 25 pixel margin, which is the space at the top of it, to the left, and to the right, and to the bottom, although we can't tell that. I'll put a, another paragraph in. We'll see the padding underneath as well. So there's a 25 pixel gap. Now this paragraph has also got its own spacing by default as well. So that's showing up there. So the last thing is border. Now I've got border of 10 pixels and it's solid black. It doesn't have to be solid. You could put dotted for effect. And Chrome's doing it in square dots and Firefox and IE doing it in round dots. It just shows you how differently the browsers treat different properties by default, and you can never be sure that they're going to look the same. Having said that, 
How important is it that everything looks exactly the same in every browser? I'm not one of these people that thinks that you should spend hours and days trying to make things look pixel perfect as long as they look good in all browsers. Who cares? Because the only people who's going to be comparing the page in one browser against another browser is going to be you. Okay, so I've got my my border around the element now. I'm going to put it back to solid just because it's going to be easier to see. Okay, so there's, the border is 10 pixels. Now it gets interesting. If I want to set the, let's just make this slightly easier to see. If I want to set the width of my outer div now, where do we think this div is going to finish? So let's find out. Okay, it's finishing at about the 640 pixel mark on that one and on that one and in Internet Explorer it's finishing around the 500 and something pixel mark just goes to show you never can tell so where's the width coming from so I'm saying the width of my red element my red div should be 500 pixels but what it's doing is it's it's saying okay the width is 500 pixels but then I'm adding it adds the width of the padding and the width of the border and the width of the margin on top of that. So it seems like my div in let's let's take the let's take the margin off to start with. I'll just come into that. If I take the margin off, okay, so that's now coming up to Still over the 600 pixel mark. Take the margin off, put up the margin top 25 pixels back on because we're looking at the width here. Okay, so in Chrome it's at 620 pixels. So where's that 620 pixels? So we've got 500 pixels of width, then we've got mm. 50 pixels of padding. But that's at the left and the right and the top and the bottom. So the left and the right add up to another 100 pixels. And then we've got 10 pixels of border all the way around. So that's giving me my extra 20. Let's see what happens in Firefox. It's the same. And in Internet Explorer, it seems to be coming up to 520 pixels, but it still has some padding to the left. So... The point we're trying to make here is that browsers can behave slightly differently. You may want to adjust your CSS for different browsers, which it is possible to do. That's something that we'll look at later on in the course. So if I take all the padding off, Okay, now Internet Explorer didn't recognize my double line there for my comment, but it should recognize this, this style. Yeah, so it recognizes that now. You can see that they're still different. It's actually quite hard to get these things to look exactly the same, even with very simple settings. So that's, we've taken off the padding. We've taken off the margin, apart from left it at the top so that we can see the numbers. Now if I take off the border as well, that is now hitting the 500 mark exactly on all three browsers. Apart from, only on one of them can you actually see the, the red behind because, in this, because we've lost the padding, we shouldn't be able to see that. Um, the, the red showing up because the yellow is still filling it. So let's play a little bit with the with the yellow. If I want to have some some red showing, I could add. Now if I add padding to the yellow, nothing's happening because it's just added 100 pixels of padding all the way around. So I'll change that back down. What I need to do 
is add margin to the yellow. And it's added margin at the sides, but not the top and bottom in these two. And it's added it all the way around in Internet, Internet Explorer. So that should have margin all the way around. It does in IE. For some reason it doesn't in Firefox. And I've got absolutely no explanation why that should be at all. I'm going to add a, a border of 5 pixel solid green. And there is, you know, you can see how it's all working. So I hope that I've explained a few important things. The difference between padding, which is spacing inside an element, and then border, which is a border on the element, and then margin, which is spacing outside of that again. Plus the fact that these things very often don't work exactly the same in different browsers. So you may want to check how your pages look in various different browsers as well.